Uh, hi guys, uh, my hair is just bad enough. We figured it was time to reinvent uh, Tech Talk. And this would be episode number 12. And uh, we're back to work. It is 2024. Uh, we had an amazing time when we were away in uh, Mexico, but uh, we're back at it. And something we've discovered on this round is that in the last month, we've hit like three fuel-injected motorcycles that all have seized pumps, and they haven't even been parked all that long. So uh, that whole uh, not stabilizing your fuel for carbureted motorcycles, which we're all well aware of, is now translating into the fuel-injected uh, motorcycles as well. The gas is so bad that within a year, uh, we're getting resin appearing in tanks that's seizing fuel pumps. Not the case in this instance. This is actually like a decade of abuse. And uh, the fuel pump, uh, I just wanted to point out that uh, really super important to make sure your fuel tank is full of good fuel it's been stabilized because uh moisture turns things to rust and this kind of rust uh, is uh incredibly damaging so again fuel tank full no moisture uh, gets into the well no 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 water anyway uh, you want to displace that by having uh, a full of gasoline that is stabilized. And uh, and if you can, uh, ideally keep your bike at room temperature. Uh, if you put it outside, don't put it under a bike cover. That they make, they're just a moisture trap. And uh, yeah, so we're going to see if we can make anything of this. Well, as well as that whole fuel fiasco we had the other day, we're starting to see a pattern and uh, I thought it was worth a conversation uh, as the mechanic and who's got tech talk and an opinion about everything. Uh, I thought I would uh, throw out there. I saw this before, but I'm seeing it more now and I don't know what the cause of it is, uh, but we're doing a lot of call outs to do jobs that the customer's taken upon themselves to do and are I've done wrong. So something even is, and our friend said, is it like everything? Is like, what, what should I and shouldn't I do? Like, can I do oil changes? I go, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but we are doing a lot of call outs for people who are stripping the drain plugs on their bikes. So I think the big thing is really super important is to know what your limitations are. But as a trend to try and understand and explain why this is happening, it's like, I don't know. And, and my question to, to you guys out there is, uh, I have a few belief systems and, and maybe prove me wrong. I know everything's getting a lot more expensive. And in a lot of cases, it comes down to we just have to find ways around doing stuff. So we take more projects on ourselves to save the money. And uh, and when it goes wrong, and sadly, in a lot of these cases, it costs you three times as much money. So there's a little bit of false economy in that scenario. Also, I think a lot of people have lost faith in the motorcycle industry. I know even I've been to other mechanics on like on our road trip coming back from Panama where uh, a bike shop wouldn't allow me to do the tire change uh, myself, wouldn't allow me to do it in their on their property. But uh, they would give me a really good deal and I said, go ahead and do it. And when I got my bike back, the chain had been adjusted completely wrong. And so I think there's a lot of people who are probably pretty frustrated with paying a lot of money for getting improper service done. So maybe people are taking this stuff upon themselves because they don't trust uh, the people doing the work. Uh, I'm also seeing that a lot of the shops in our local area here is uh, when we went away as a shop and several others went away, you're left with uh, big corporate identities that uh, are not a bashful about charging. So is it about the fact that you're getting just charged way too much money? Uh, I think a large component of it is as motorcyclists, we think that we should be more hands-on and that we should know how to do our own tire changes and we should know how to do uh, our own work on our own bikes. Uh, maybe it's peer pressure. Maybe it's, uh, you know, all of my friends say it's easy. I should be able to do it too. But uh, maybe your friends should be doing it with you. Um, or maybe not. I've had a few cases where friends have helped friends into trouble. We're here tonight uh, on this bike here. Uh, for simple, was a, a brake pad change on the front that went wrong. Uh, basically what happened is uh, the system was under pressure and one of the pistons popped out and then that was it. No go. A couple hours in, uh, the owner said, call up the mechanic, get him to sort it out. Uh, 
A lot of modern motorcycles have complicated ABS systems with pumps, and this one actually has a power assisted brake system, and it doesn't back bleed well. So when you're pushing the pistons in, they don't wanna go back in easily. Um, and that was the case in this one. So we had to show up, I had to make sure the pistons went back in properly, clean everything up, and then while we're here, what the heck, we'll give it an oil change. Um, so give us your thoughts. Why is it people are doing work themselves? Why do you do work yourselves? Why do you feel that you're compelled to do the work yourself? And where do you draw the line? Uh, and what will you do if when it goes wrong? And the biggest thing as a mechanic and as a motorcyclist myself is my biggest concern is if you don't have a lot of experience doing certain jobs, um, they can really hurt you like brake jobs. They, they seem real simple, but if you get it wrong, it can kill you. Everything on a motorcycle, if you get it wrong, it could kill you. But there's a, a large uh, number of people who are taking on the tire installation game because 50 bucks just seems like way too much money to spend to install a tire. And I've beat this horse before. I'll probably even reference the video I talked about it in. But uh, the most important things you can really do is for control of your bike is the tires and the brakes. And, and uh, are you qualified? There's a good question. So right, give me your feedback on that. Tell us what you think. Uh, we're going to bring you with us to work tomorrow. We're going to do another pop-up and get to meet some of our customers and some of the stuff we do on the day-to-day -day, uh, in our pop-up situation. really straightforward uh, and this gentleman came in and wanted his bike checked over. Stephanie's gone over all the systems on it, everything looks a-okay. -okay. Nothing tells you more than a test ride, so I'm gonna go for a spin. Really should have got that eight minute shock swap on a KLR. I wouldn't have been able to keep up on that. Blah! At any rate, uh, customers should be really happy with that. We're going to do minimum shop time. We're going to do his chain service. I found out that his uh, shifter bolt was loose when I went to pop it into neutral. Uh, I'll look it over, do a few other things, but uh, yeah, should be a happy camper. So we have this uh, Triumph in and uh, a little bit of an upgrade to a much prettier chain. But uh, I don't know if it's much of a tech tip, but as a technician, I like to like make the bike look a lot better than when it came to me. It's just a really nice, classy thing to do. Uh, I use a little bit of wax, detail up the rim, swing arm, service a kickstand, all that jazz. We're gonna go take a look at the suspension. <laughs> 